Hey everybody, this is Joel Hoekstra of Whitesnake. I want to work with you guys today a little on hybrid picking some arpeggios. Hybrid picking, for those that don't know, is the combination of using the pick and also finger picking uh, with your right hand. Uh, so, off we go. Okay, so exercise one is really just going to walk us right through the chords of G major. Um, and for those of you that um, haven't taken your theory classes, uh, I mean, I advise you do. I think it's great to have different ways to look at music. Obviously, playing from the gut and from the heart is totally awesome, but the more you understand with your mind, I think even better to, to mesh with that. Uh, but there's seven chords in any key. Uh, one, four, and five are major, two, three, and six are minor, and seven is diminished, and that's just the way it, our musical system is based on the major scale. Taking the first, third, and fifth of each um, scale step um, gives you those chords called triads. Uh, so anyway, uh, I'm going to start out with most, a shape most of you are familiar with here. Uh, just a G major chord, like a bar chord. Okay, um, I just want to work on to get the hybrid picking going. Um, and really, this is almost more for your right hand than it is the left hand. Um, I just want to start with the pick on the low G. Using my middle finger for that next string. My third to get that D string and then my pinky to get the top note. That's usually the hardest for people. Sometimes you gotta spend a little time just working on building up the string. Get that, okay? So it's just right up. Okay, and then A minor. B minor. C. D. E minor. And F sharp diminished. Oh, I think we ended it here in the magazine. Okay, so uh, with the minor chords, it's interesting to note that my left hand is kind of taking the first finger and skipping over to get that rather than barring. Obviously with high gain, you want to break it up. If it was a clean thing, you know, you could definitely just hold a chord down and work with your right hand. But that's going to help make it sound cleaner. So here's exercise one in total, where you're just assigning your pick to the low E and each corresponding finger to the A, D, and G strings. So here we go. Okay, so that's a great place to start to just get your right hand going, uh, especially to be able to build up the pinky, which is a little tricky for most people. Um, this exercise two, I want to do something a little more fun musically and add in a little hammer-on pull-off thing. So uh, with that E minor chord, I'm actually adding in the nine, okay? So I think most of you have probably seen that chord over the years, right? Great prog chord. And then heading up here to the G, I want to just get that G note and hammer down the 14 and off. So we have... Okay, now I'm going to change what note we're hammering on, okay? So I want to head up with the pinky to 16 there. Okay, so there's the E minor measure. And now heading down to D. We're heading with starting out exactly the same, just that one, five, nine in terms of the intervals. There's the major third. You're hammering on the fourth. And back down. Starting the same here with C major. But in theory, right here, you're gonna get the sharp 11, not the four. So you're. And. Instead of just playing a B minor, which in terms of the straight theory would be there, uh, the most replaced chord in E minor is, of course, turning B minor into B major, which I did here. So instead of starting off with a 9, which would not be in key, it's a flat 9. So we have... So all in all with exercise 2, it sounds something like this. Exercise three, I wanted to venture up to the higher strings and get out and make this a little bit more of a, a lead type thing. Um, 
we're just going to take really the notes of a G major chord right here, um, which would look like this. Okay, people, I'm sure you've seen this little chord, which is the D chord moved up there, and then there's your G. Okay, just so you can get a visual on what we're working with here. So, left hand wise, I'm going to start like this, and we're going to shift the pinky over when it comes time to get that eighth fret on the B. Okay, if that makes sense. So, again, assigning the, the pick and the three fingers, you've got the pick on the D, the middle finger on the G, third finger on any notes that happen on the B string, and the pinky on any notes that are happening on the high E. Okay, so there's our pattern with G. Okay, and if there's, depending on the sequence, I mean, I may cheat and, and replace my pinky with my third finger. I do that often. Okay, so technically, I guess you could play this sequence that way as well. You see my third finger's getting what's on the high E and then the B. If you're not playing notes in succession, then that works just fine. So uh, either way for you guys, depending on which way you want to do that here. Um, so with the G chord, now we're going to move up to A minor, okay? And that is going to look like this, okay? So obviously I'm separating the notes. I'm not just leaving them down. But on clean, that would work really cool too. It would sound great. Okay, we have B minor. C major, which is thankfully going to be the same as G major. D major. So we've only really had two patterns so far, the major and minor. And here's E minor, which is going to be the same as A minor. Just put up here to E, right? You see where that's the root note? Okay. And now we're finally onto a different pattern here, the diminished, okay? Um, that would look like this. It's got that flatted five, that diminished thing. We've all learned back in, you know. Right, but down here, up in here. Okay, so we're taking, that's the third up there. The root, the flat five. There's the octave of the one. So we have. And now we're back to G. Okay, so all in all, this exercise. And here it is a little faster. Okay, where exercise three jumped around a little more and was a little more pedal tony, uh, I just wanted to give you one more right hand pattern with really those same patterns that we were working with in terms of the left hand for exercise four. Um, I'm just gonna work with that E minor chord that we had climbed up to here. Start with the high note. Okay. Again, just making sure the left hand is down when your right hand is picking it. Um, and, and not sitting down too long. So I move down to D here. And then B. Uh, once again, that, that B major chord in the key of E minor just sounds so cool. Um, technically, in terms of theory, it would be B minor there, but Again, that's the most replaced chord you'll ever hear in the, the standard seven chord system. I think in the exercise we wrote each one twice. All right, so exercise five, I just wanted to give you something, again, like we did in exercise two, where you add a little hammer-on and pull-off thing leading into it. Um, it's going to change up in terms of the left hand here. I want to take that G pattern that we were kind of playing around with um, and do a little pull-off here on the high E going down. Eight, seven, five. Now, again, right hand, I'm still getting that with my pinky, and I, that's going to be pretty necessary on this one. I can't cheat over with that third finger, which is, you know, I like to do whenever I can. Um, instinctually, because the pinky's just, it's weaker. Um, anyway, I am pulling off 8, 7, 5, and then I'm getting the power chord end of the G here. So why do those notes work? Well, what are we adding? Well, we're adding that 4 right here, right? If you were to play a G chord, 
right? That's all that is. And there's the two. So we're really just adding the, the four and the two into the triad. There's your third. So there's the opening phrase of exercise five. Now I just want to change the top note from the four to the five. Okay, so we have... The chin itself is kind of a cool, cool lick, and that's a great place to start with this because we're not going to change a whole lot from there. And when we move up to C, the only difference is, once again, uh, in terms of the notes of G major, uh, the 4 is not in key. The sharp 11 is. 11 is really the same thing as 4, for um, those that haven't done the interval thing, um, my apologies. But um, it really just indicates that it's like, take, go up to the 11th note of a major scale and sharp it. That's what I'm referring to. So, so instead of this, that would not be in key in G major. So. We're doing the Lydian thing here. And then I'm changing that top note to the, the fifth. So here's what we have for the C section of this exercise. Okay, now with D, we're back to using the fourth. Uh, and then obviously back up to G. Okay, here's what we have all in all on that. And a little more up to speed. So anyway, I hope you find some of those hybrid picking arpeggios useful, guys. Uh, get those right hand calluses going and, and uh, enjoy it. It's been a pleasure.